We've all done it, we've all sat there as we've booted our favourite Halo games once we've got home, and rather than playing the game, we just sat there and admired Halo's inspiring, jaw-dropping and emotional scores play out as you got ready to immerse yourself into incredible worlds and the stories that they tell. Marty O'Donnell and Michael Salvatore have produced some of the most iconic video game soundtracks during their time with the franchise. They set a precedent on how modern video games should approach music and allowed fans for the first time to listen to music from their favourite games without it making feel weird, if that makes any sense. Whether it's the Monk chants, Steve Vai shredding on guitar, or getting emotional with Never Forget, Halo had it all, but a word you'll hear a lot about these days coming from 343 is legacy. Respecting the legacy of the franchise whilst developing and pushing it forward. This is what fans want to hear, and are we getting these deliverables from the music front? Well, I'm happy to say yes, but the question is why? What are they doing well? What are they doing a fantastic job on, and what potentially could they do better? Well, you better believe that is something we're going to discuss, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hey up lads and lasses, Fletch here from Ultimate Halo and thank you so much for tuning in once again. I would really appreciate if you guys could hit that subscribe button, it helps me reach that dream goal of 100,000 subscribers. And I want you to let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think to Halo Infinite's music? How do you think it stacks up to previous Halo games such as Marty O'Donnell's music or any other composers such as Neil Davidge or Kazuma Jinauchi? Let me know, curious to know your thoughts. Just for a bit of context, there are multiple composers for Halo Infinite. There is Gareth Corker, Joel Jager, and Curtis Schweitzer. They're all doing a fantastic job, and there is a really interesting interview on Halo Waypoint with Gareth Corker, which I'll leave in the description. So first of all, we are going to work off the gameplay demo we saw last week, and look at how we use music, and then we'll move on to the previous trailers we've already seen. My first observation is actually one of constructive feedback for the opening scene. I would have loved to see some music just to get your blood pumping as the pelican was being attacked. This isn't happening. I'm going to have to make an emergency landing. Hold on. Then it can go silent as it does here. Just let the moment sink in with the interaction between Chief and the pilots. No. Get. No. You. I can't. Stand this! Who oh, you are? Breathe. No! You don't get to tell me what to do. Then from there, as the pilot confronts Chief, the music starts. I haven't been safe since I found you. I found you, remember? You were out there on your own and you'd still be out there if it wasn't for me. I thought I was going home. There won't be a home if we don't stop the banished. You keep saying that. We're outgunned, outnumbered. I know I saw Condors over there. I'm going to dig through them and find one with the working sleep space drive. And when you're done with this war, we'll get away from here. Far away. Wait here. Oh. Please. Let me see what I can find. Cannons first. When I get back, we can look. Now what I love about this is that the more Chief keeps talking and the more actions he takes, it, the more it fills you with hope. Then this next bit is what I really enjoy about the music in this next part. It builds with the drums and then... Shh. Ambience. The world and everything that inhabits it takes centre stage. I did see the actor man make comments about having some music at this point here, but I actually disagree strongly with him on that. I'm not saying this is what he's trying to imply, but having music play all the time isn't always a good thing, and when the game decides to use restraint, this is when it becomes the most impactful. I do reference this game a lot in some of my videos, and hell, I've drawn a lot of parallels between Halo Infinite and this game before, but Zelda Breath of the Wild does this perfectly. It knows when to use musical cues to trigger your senses and highlight parts of the game that should evoke certain emotions, such as sadness, curiosity or excitement. So in this scene it needed no music because having no music connects you to the world for more reasons we'll see in a moment. Chief in this next part goes to take out these grunts, reload and in the distance you hear something. It's not in sight but it's clearly looming over. You can hear a phantom and this could be obscured by music ever so slightly but because there's no music playing it's not forcing you to make you feel how you should think about it. 
An example of this is when I was a kid, I remember when the spirits used to come in on Halo Combat Evolved and fly over, when there was no music, there was a feeling of anxiety because I didn't know what would be in it, what kind of enemies are there, where it was going to land, you would let the environment and the situation steer that, rather than artificially trying to force that with music. At this point the player leads the warthog to the top of this hill and this is where it starts to get interesting. Music didn't start with this next encounter until you killed the first batch of enemies and there's a good reason for this we'll tackle in a second but as soon as that elite's body hits the ground drums cued with low strings kicking into action. <laughs> This indicates that the action isn't over and you best guess that things are going to get pumped up. But just notice how the music isn't all crazy action like let's go 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 go. is actually keeping pace with the player. The combat scenario is manageable, there aren't too many enemies to fight at this point, whereas I feel Halo 5 would have dealt with this quite differently by going all out to make the player feel like a badass with very bombastic music. Then once all the brutes are dealt with, it goes back to ambience. It just allows you the player to breathe and it gives some good old you time. Then once Chief activates the lift, the awe inspiring choir kicks in with a halo theme to trigger your appreciation for the large open world you're in. And then as the action kicks back in you transition to this low drum once again and what I've noticed is that the music slowly starts to build and the action starts to progress in the game. So does the music as well so this is leading me to believe this game has some sort of systems in place that uses music dynamically based on the situation. Halo 3 did have this to a degree where Marty wrote all of the music in a way that could layer progressively and also transition effectively to the next piece which is why I think drums are a key feature in this demo for two reasons. We're just going to take a step back as to when we took out this elite. If some strings came in at this point it wouldn't have hit in the same way. Don't get me wrong, you can be aggressive with strings but percussive instruments give impact meaning you can jump in with a drum to start pumping blood through the player's veins. Then from there another great reason to use drums is to transition into pieces is if the song is in another key. Now don't worry if you're not well versed in the world of music, I play and write music myself but I'm no music theory expert but basically you can't just switch from one song to another that quickly as the key of the song dictates what notes can be used based on the scales it uses. Different keys means different notes in a scale, switch to a scale without the right notes and it can just sound jarring. Now of course, don't get me wrong, songs do have key changes which tend to be done in specific ways but on the whole this is the idea. So when it comes to switching music, your percussion instruments aid this. I don't think the trailer does this as far as I can tell just by scanning it over by ear but it's certainly a possibility for the full game. Anywho, back to where we just left off, we then kill all the enemies where the music starts to fade out. We enter the anti-air turret and this is where it starts to get really interesting. What I really want to discuss is some of the more thematic choices behind this music as Eshram starts to talk, low strings and brass starts to play with a low octave variation of the Halo theme. The lost this war months ago. Your people are broken. Strings build, drums rumble and things come to a head and build to the Halo theme playing out but there's something interesting going on here which I think suits the story of the game excellently. Let's just stop. I'm going to play the raw soundtrack on its own and I want you to listen out for low strings and piano here and then hear the higher strings play back right after.
Can you hear that? This in music is what you refer to as call and response. It's basically where the music asks a question and you provide an answer in response. And I think this is done in a very clever way. The low parts are the banished being the threat and by nature being quite menacing, whilst the higher strings are more stoic whilst fighting back and resisting their opposites, which you could say reflects the UNSC and more specifically the chief to save mankind. Then we do see another rendition of a classic theme with some slight changes. On the whole, I'm extremely happy with how the music was presented and I cannot wait to see more. Just to review previous trailers as well, the infinite reveal music was taken from Halo 4's green and blue ending, which is obviously sporting the Halo 3 fanfare at the end, and Halo Infinite's Discover Hope trailer was mainly new, with some piano pieces that were reminiscent of previous songs, when he discovers Chief, but then it all builds from the stoic themes we've seen in previous Halo games. Then at the end we get the classic drums which we love and the da 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 etc. So overall, Halo Infinite's music is absolutely amazing and the implementation so far for the most part is fantastic. I love how it respects the classic games whilst doing its own thing that fits the themes it's trying to develop, so bravo, there's Halo CE 2, 3, 4, 5, Wars 1 and 2 all in there and I can't wait to see what's on the horizon. But what do you think? Are you happy with Halo Infinite's musical direction? Let me know in the comment section and once again my name is Jack Fletcher and I will see you next time on the one and the only Ultimate Halo. And I was right. Subscribe now to Ultimate Halo for more unfreaking believable Halo content.